On Good Friday, much is said and remembered about what happened to Jesus on the cross at Calvary. But I want to take a moment to look at what happened to Jesus just before he ascended that hill. And for that, we'll look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. Verse 26 says this, Then he, Pontius Pilate, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. The Gospel of John, we read something similar in chapter 19, which says, Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. These terms, scourged and flogged, they're not familiar terms to us as 21st century Christians. But the first century hearer or reader of the Word of God would have had a very vivid picture come to their mind. They would have known that Jesus was going to be tied to a post and having his body stretched out. They would have known that a Roman soldier would be nearby, but not any Roman soldier, but one that was trained in human torture. They would have known that he would have been holding a short whip with several strands of leather that were hanging off of it. And at the end of those strands, tied into knots would have been pieces of metal uh, or, or little balls made of lead or maybe even pebbles or rocks, anything that could inflict more pain upon the victim. And they would have known that Jesus would be beaten from the top of his back all the way down to his legs, blow after bloody blow. They would have been able to picture the pools of blood collecting beneath his feet. They would have known that by the end of that terrible, terrible session of torture, his flesh and his skin would be hanging off of his body like ribbons. And then we know that that wasn't the end of it for Jesus, but that after he was taken down from that post, they gave him a scarlet robe, likely made of wool, interacting with nerve endings, sending sharp pain into all different parts of his body. We know that they fashioned together a crown of thorns, mocking him. We know that they gave him a reed to use as a scepter, but that they also beat him upon his head with that very same reed bowing before him, saying, Hail, King Jesus! Hail, King of the Jews! We know what happened to Jesus. But what's really important today, friends, is that we look to why. Not just what, but why. And for that, we turn to God's word in Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 4 says this, Surely he has borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Verse 5, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. Friends, the reason this happened to Jesus who was innocent, the reason he was treated as a criminal was for sinners like you and like me. God in his infinite mercy sent his one and only son to be tortured and die so that we might have a relationship with him. Uh, later on in that same chapter, verse 10, it says, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. This was God's will. In Hebrews 12, we're told that for the joy that was set before the Lord Jesus Christ, he endured the cross. This was Jesus's will. It was the will of God the Father that his son would be tortured. It was the will of Jesus Christ, God the Son, that he would go through this for sinners like you and like me, so that by his wounds we would be healed.